Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is going to be a quick rundown of how to use Core Gadget 2 inside BeatMaker 3. Pretty much, I've gotten some questions about how it works and why it works. So I'm just going to explain to you uh, the process pretty much real fast. If you have any uh, questions, please first refer to my earlier videos that I posted that uh, I think give a clear explanation and understanding of how it works. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to explain to those who are kind of having a hard time right now understanding what how it works and why it works. So the first thing is I have three separate instruments loaded into Core Gadget 2 and I have a master output. Now while we have three instruments, all three instruments do not have the ability to route audio outside of Core Gadget 2. All the audio all the audio is routed into this master out. And so when we go to Beatmaker 3 I have four banks. This first bank is the initial plugin of Core Gadget 2, which is loaded into BeatMaker 3. I copy that instance of Core Gadget 2 onto three separate banks. Now, while these three separate banks appear to have Core Gadget 2 on them, these are simply just MIDI controllers. They don't have the ability, ability to produce sound. They are simply triggering sound. Just like a keyboard it's, or a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI uh, instrument that you may have. They make sound, but they don't produce their own sound without being plugged into an actual instrument. This first instance of Core Gadget is the actual plugin, the actual instrument. And so, unlike a desktop uh, DAW, you don't have the ability to load Core Gadget two in multiple apps but you can copy that instance of core gadget onto different banks or different pads so while i have sound that's triggered out of all three midi banks all the sound is being routed into that one main instance of core gadget so if i want to record audio from that initial instance instance of Core Gadget, I would add an audio track. And direct it to internal and to that initial instance of Core Gadget. Because that's the only one that's able to actually send sound into Beatmaker 3. So let's start off by recording some, uh, a MIDI track. That consists of drums. Let's lay some drums down. And I also want to record an audio stem at the same time. So I'm going to set audio one to ar being armed. Make sure that it's pointed at the initial instance of Core Gadget. And I'm going to also record it as MIDI at the same time. So if I want to make any edits, I can. So we have a audio track and we have a MIDI track. If I solo that MIDI track, you won't hear any sound coming out of it because it's only a MIDI track. But if I solo the audio track, which is a master uh, out of Core Gadget 2, you hear the sound. So say you want to lay down another uh, another track for this next track we're gonna lay down some piano samples so what I would do is mute out that first MIDI track so no sound is uh, received from audio track 2 since it only listens to the main out of Core Gadget 2 but let's just say we didn't do that and we just decided to record and we didn't uh, mute out that first track. This is what would happen. But 
where you get both the drum sound and the piano sound. So in order to just get that piano sound, I'm going to mute that first MIDI track. And record now I have also the ability to listen to that audio one track which is not sending any audio to that other audio track it's just simply playing that audio track that's already laid right there so let's record in the C1 while also recording into a2 or audio 2 So that's a simple explanation of how to record audio stems and MIDI stems into uh, Core Gadget 2 and BeatMaker 3. As I stated before, if you want a more detailed explanation of how to set this up, please refer to my earlier videos, uh, particularly the one right before this one that gives uh, a detailed explanation of how it works and why it works. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, send me uh, a comment and uh, Holla at me. Take care.